here. So you can see where it bolts and we ran bolt all the way through here and then we drill and threaded those center ones and then we ran a bolt all the way through the bottom and and center those so then you've got five on this side of the block and I put a stiffener in the bottom and I put five on this side of the block so there's ten bolts bolting that block and it's all bolted to this one inch piece of plate and you know if I get a cylinder and I gotta run my cylinder machine it's not going to hurt a thing for this engine to sit back here and go around in circles when you're taking a cylinder part. It's not going to hurt anything. Just secure secure it down so that you don't have parts flying all over the place. But I think it'll be fine. I think it's going to work out real well. It sure beats an engine rotator. I mean, I've had rotators. I still got a small rotator. Well, it's not real small. I put 471s on it all the time. 671 will fit on there, but you got to jack it up to rotate a 671 because they're too long. But if you had a 3406 or something like that, or a big inline six Mac or something, I think it'd be real handy. And I think it works good because I'm right here next to the shop and I've got my air, my electric, my torches and everything I need. Plus when I put my cover over my cylinder machine, it comes all the way out here and it covers the whole thing up. So I think at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's going to be awful handy to have around here, even for pressure washing. So I come out here and I degrease it, pressure wash the thing all off, pressure washers right inside the door. I, I think it's just going to work out really great. So there was some guy out there commenting about a combine rear end. I hope you get her done. I think you'll find out it'll work pretty good. Just make sure you put a lot of good footings underneath of it because I got six yards of concrete under this plus it weighs, I don't know, I, I imagine it probably weighs between 12 and 15,000 without an engine on it. So just make sure you got her anchored good. So these are the air box covers. If you take these air box covers off and you get inside of there, you can see the piston, the piston liner, the rings. You can see everything inside these air box covers if you take them off. This engine's locked up so tight. I've been trying to crank on it with a bar. I've got this great big bar out here and I've been jumping up and down on it. And I've had it soaking in crawl oil for... It's been soaking in crawl oil now for about four or five weeks. And needless to say, it hasn't. I opened up. I shot it down inside the. I shot it down inside the. The cylinder head up on top of the valves. I lubricated everything on the top end. I shot it in on the pistons, and I've been doing that every week for probably six weeks now. And it's not giving up and it's stuck tight but I'd sure like to get it freed up before I take the head off otherwise you're gonna have uh, the, the fuel rack is free you can see that otherwise when you start to bar it around you're gonna push the liner right out of the block with a piston and I'm really hoping I can salvage a lot of that stuff I don't want to have to buy any more new parts than, than what I absolutely have to have so if you look up here you'll see that you got a four valve head instead of a two valve head. A fuel injector in the middle. Ex two exhaust valves on this rocker arm. Two exhaust valves on this rocker arm. Fuel lines come out of the drilled passage in the head and go to the fuel injector. So your fuel injector sits right here, held down with a crab and a and a single bolt. We're going to have them out. We're going to show you all about all that stuff before this is over with. But. Uh, Right now what we're trying to do is just soak it down and, and uh, trying to get the thing to free up. So I wanted you to see my engine rotator 
how it's working. I wanted you to see the plate, how it's working, and now we're going to start working on this engine. I wanted to show you a few of the Detroit diesel tools. This first one right here is what goes down and adjusts the push tubes for to set your injector and your valve. This one here is the jam nut that goes on top of that. Locks up the jam nut. These are both snap-ons. I showed you the snap-on uh, fuel socket for the fuel rails. These are injector timing pins and they're all a different length. 1484, 1470, uh, 1460, which is most of mine are 1460's. They sit in the top of the fuel injector in a little bitty hole. I'm going to show you this little hole here. They go right in that little timing hole right there like that when it's in the engine so what you want is when the valves are down you want this bottom of this timing tool to wipe the oil off the top of this right here that's when they're correctly timed this of course is a compression this is your jumper you always do about four or five hundred rpm when you're checking your compression on each cylinder. This is a Mac tool that I've used for years. They come in a set and they come in a little uh, red pouch but they're real handy for getting down and getting underneath of that fuel injector and frying it up. This tool here is for it goes down in the cylinder liner and this goes out into the portholes on each side and it you put the flat side down against the piston and then as you bar the engine around this pushes the liner out of the block. That's what that's for. This is a liner hold down tool. You can need one for every cylinder. So if you look here it says 110. So this side of it's for a 110 series engine. If you turn it over it says 53 and 71. So this side is for a 53 series or 71 series engine. It goes right on top of the block. This little indentation goes down against the liner. You bolt it down so when you're barring the engine around you don't push the liners up. These are 12 point quarter inch uh, that holds the rack. Usually this little guy right here, 12 point quarter inch, that's what the bolts that hold the rack down. The uh, no go, no no go go gauges I'll get it right in a minute here you can see like this one right here it says 25 and 27 thousandths so the very end of it is 25 thousandths the shoulder of its 27 thousandths so if you use this one you're going to want your valve set at 26 thousandths so when this one goes and this one doesn't you know it's exactly 26 thousandths handy tool Mac tool. These are uh, fuel pump wrenches for the Detroit diesel fuel pumps. They got three bolts that holds them on. Sometimes they're kind of contrary, especially on a V engine. Uh, it's really handy to have these tools to get that fuel pump off. This tool here is for putting the little caps on the on the wrist pins on either side of the wrist pin. You put the little metal piece on there and you tap it with a hammer, and it puts it right into that where the wrist pin goes through. It's on the outside of the wrist pin. Of course then you got to check it with a vacuum gauge but uh, that's what that's for. So just to show you a few of the tools that uh, if you see them laying around you'll know what they're for. These are awfully handy right here and the timing pins too and the fuel. So if you see them laying around someplace you'll know what they're for. With that being said I hope you liked the video and if you're gonna make one good luck to you. Thanks for watching.